Hello, and welcome. My name is Michael Ellerbeck, and today we will be talking about the application load balancer versus the network load balancer versus the classic load balancer. First, since we are talking about networking, it's helpful to dust off the OSI model. The first difference between these three load balancers is what layer they operate at. The application load balancer, or ALB, operates at layer 7, appropriately the application layer. The network load balancer, or NLB, operates at layer 4. The ALB at layer 7 is able to inspect application level content and route based on HTTP and HTTPS protocol. It has access to HTTP headers, so if you want to send requests that include foo in the URL to one server and bar in the other URL to another server, you can do that. The network load balancer operates at layer 4 and routes IP protocols, TCP and UDP. Now, let's talk about the classic load balancer. Amazon recommends if you have an existing application that was built within the EC2 Classic network, then you should use a classic load balancer. The classic load balancer can load balance layer 7 HTTP and HTTPS and layer 4 TCP, but Amazon recommends an application load balancer for layer 7 and a network load balancer for layer 4 when using a virtual private cloud. Let's do a demo. I've done some pre-work, so like on a cooking show, I can pull it out of the oven. There are two subnets configured with a route to the Internet Gateway. Each of these subnets belongs to a different availability zone, and there is a web server running on an EC2 in each. The NACL has been set up to allow web traffic. So what are we going to do? We're going to set up this network load balancer. Under the EC2 dashboard, we're going to go down to Load Balancers, and then we're going to click Create Load Balancer. This shows the three types, the application load balancer, the network load balancer, and that classic load balancer, the previous generation that we talked about. What we want is a network load balancer. Also notice that it's capable of handling millions of requests per second. Click Create. We're going to name it. 80 is fine. And we're going to select those two availability zones. We're going to create our target. We're going to click those two EC2 web servers. And don't forget to click Add to Registered. Next. And I'm going to pause the video here, as it can take quite a while. OK, let's see what we got. If we go to the address of our network load balancer, we are routed to one of our web servers. Now I'm going to kill this web server, the health check will fail, and it should route us to the other one. OK, let's refresh and see what happens. There we go. Over to server 1. Let's do another quick demo with the ALB. In this case, I've already set up the ALB, and I set up a target group for foo and a target group for bar. Let's see how that works. OK, let's see how this ALB is set up. As mentioned before, we have a target foo, which goes to one instance, and a target bar, which goes to the other instance. If we look at our ALB now, under listeners, and look at the rules, we'll see that we have path rules. If the path is foo, forward it to target foo. If the path is bar, forward it to target bar. Let's check this out. Take our DNS. We're going to go to foo first. And there we are. Web server 1 is on foo. Go to bar. And there we go that Web Server 2 is bar. Thank you, and hope you have enjoyed this presentation on the application load balancer versus the network load balancer versus the classic load balancer.